Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV and your latest Liverpool news update. My name is Dan Club, and I will be with you for the next half an hour or so talking about a few of the news stories circulating in the Reds at the moment. And yet they are transfer related and um, we're getting back towards that time of the year whereby transfers are very much at the forefront of the news agenda. And yet Liverpool, albeit going very well in the Premier League, Europa League, Carabao Cup at the moment, there is still some sort of talk questions about whether we do need to delve into the January transfer window for a couple of key positions in particular and interestingly enough those positions are the ones I'm going to cover with you for the next half an hour as I say and it begins with reports and these are names that have been heavily linked to Liverpool for quite some time now so it's no huge surprise there's nobody sort of fresh out of the ether today really. You had the Jamal Musiala one the other day and Neil Jones had been in this morning with Steve speaking about the Musiala stuff and whether it's any truth in it, whether it's likely to happen or not. But these two I'm going to talk about, they've been around for some time. They're both heavy linked in the summer and that hasn't gone away. Um, so yeah, it's Gonzalo Inacio is the initial one. It comes from the mirror just, I think it was yesterday they reported that Liverpool and Manchester United both sent scouts to watch Inacio in action for sports in Lisbon. Um, they're ready to battle it out to try and sign the Portuguese um, defender. 22 years old. And very highly rated, actually. Um, he's got four caps so far for Portugal. And it's interesting, when I was doing a little bit of research on how he's getting on this year, I noticed he scored twice in his four caps for Portugal. So not just a defender, not just a centre-back who's good at keeping the ball out of the net. He can also get it in the opponent's net as well. So 11 games so far this season for Sporting. Um, no goals, no assists in that time domestically. But I had a quick look at Sofa score as well to see how he's getting on from a statistical point of view. And He's doing very, very well, actually. He's averaging 7.05 as an average sofa score rating, um, which is pretty high, I've got to say. Uh, left side is centre back, of course, left footed, the type of player. We wanted over the summer quite a lot, really, didn't we, to be honest. Um, and now Andy Robertson's obviously out injured for the foreseeable future. We're seeing Simicast go in and do that role. But someone like Inacio, obviously we wanted Levi Colwell. We were quite heavily, quite strongly linked with him. He ends up signing a new deal at Chelsea. Ian Asho did likewise, and it's interesting, I've seen a few people in the chat, and I'll come to that in a second, saying, why did Liverpool get him before they upped the release clause? And it's a very fair argument, quite frankly. I think his release clause was around the £30 million mark in the summer, and now it's essentially doubled. But Liverpool may see that as we needed to see more of him, we needed to do more scouting on him, we needed to really make sure he was the one we wanted, and the fact is, Price has doubled to 60 million, might not actually be the end of the world um, because it's still not an astronomical sum of money in this crazy day and age. Um, speaking of the chat, I get into it now. Um, Vishar Ramani is the first one I'll come to and he says apparently we are scouting everyone and everybody this is the same case over and over again agents want people to hear the names of the players and this is why we're hearing all these names uh, I get it, I think Musiala kind of falls into that category to be honest because I don't see that deal being very easy to do. He is absolutely incredible. But with these two in our show, and I'll come on to Andre in a few minutes, um, again, they're two names that seem highly gettable from a Liverpool perspective. They fit the criteria in terms of what we want, as I mentioned. So in our show, left side of centre-back, can play left-back. Andre, defensive midfielder. They're the two key positions, aren't they? Like the Musiala one, he'd be... An incredible signing, but he'd be a little bit of a luxury right now for what Liverpool need. I'm not sure. You never say no to someone like Jamel Musiala because he's so good, he's so talented, but he's not necessarily where Liverpool will look to address in January, I don't imagine. Um, whereas these two, if we are going to do any January business, I imagine and I expect it to be possibly a centre-back and certainly defensive midfielder. While I'm talking, I'm just going to check how many times Inacio has actually played as a left-back, because I certainly did. I haven't checked since the summer, um, so my memory might not serve me particularly well, but I will just check while I'm here. Uh, let's just check. There we go, a little bit further down. He plays exclusively as a centre-back domestically. Um, I'll check his international stuff in a moment as well, but he's racked up. How many games has he played there? Let's just check. Played 121 matches, and Liverpool like their signings to have played. It's around 160, 170 match mark before we make any sort of judgment. So even another half a season under his belt would be a better sample size for Liverpool to go and sort of make their call on and decide whether they're going to spend the money or not. Basically, um, 
So yeah, I this is the type of signing I can see Liverpool doing. Albeit, and somebody mentions here, Malik actually mentions earlier on um, that they've essentially yeah the new contract thing has doubled his his release clause, and it wouldn't exactly be from a business perspective it wouldn't be the smartest deal because you could have took a gamble early on this year, but. You mentioned FSG and it possibly looking bad on them. I think it looks worse on FSG if they gamble on a player without their sort of tried and tested model and that sort of that amount of games, that amount of sort of background checks and all that type of stuff. If we'd have gambled on him and it hadn't worked out, they would have hated that more than they'd hate spending more money potentially. Um, and Mickey van der Ven was the other one heavy linked all summer, wasn't he? We've seen how he continues to be brilliant, um, certainly in his start for Spurs. Spurs themselves are playing really well, of course, but Mickey van der Ven, I think Liverpool felt like he might have been a bit of a gamble and a bit of a risk because he hadn't played loads for Wolfsburg, but Tottenham took that risk and it looks like it's working out really well. Um, so yeah, maybe Liverpool wanted to see a little bit more of Inacio. Um, and Russell Stubley makes the point as well. Says Inacio was 30 million this summer and now will be 60 million. The same 60 million would get you Mark Gahey, who's homegrown and got Premier League experience. I really like Mark Gahey. I think in a, what is... A pretty poor Palace side, I think, for the most part. Like certainly when they've got as a stroke Elise out injured, I think Mark Gahey is absolutely outstanding. Like I really do. I think he's a top talent. I know he played for England last week. I heard loads of sort of rave reviews on the back of that as well. So I think he would be in the mix of players Liverpool should be looking at. And I'm not sure where we stand with the homegrown stuff after the summer. I was well across it all summer, but I'm not sure whether that's changed really. But I take the point, Gehi would make a lot of sense. In that respect, um, Bwini SM says, funny how we're top four in the table without a DM. Yeah, obviously, McAllis has been doing that role for us. He's been doing it okay. I think he's doing it because he's the most disciplined and the one who's played the most as a more defensive-minded midfielder. When you've got a midfield three of Gravenberg, Sabozlai and McAllister, it feels like a no-brainer for McAllister to be the deepest because he's done it for Argentina. He's done it for Brighton, of course, alongside Caicedo. So I get it. I don't think we're getting the best out of McAllister in there. And I'm desperate, desperate for us to go and sign one. And I really hope it's in January because... Our midfield is purring already. Like, Gravenberch, I thought, was unbelievable on the weekend. And Sabozlai has been incredible ever since he put on a Liverpool shirt, basically. But I think if we can add McAllister to that rotation of attacking eights and get the best out of him as a result, oof, that's a frightening proposition for the rest of the Premier League. But I take the point entirely. Uh, Craig Flynn, up the edge and never walk alone. How are you, mate? Hope you are well. Um, Malik, thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate that. Um, I just smiled and laughed because I know I've just brought it up and Joe is on production, which means only one thing. Um, but cheers, mate. I really do appreciate it. Uh, Russell Stubbley comes back with Mark Gahey, please. Yeah, I really like Mark Gahey. I did one of these shows in the summer about Mark Gahey. I think it was a report from Football Insider off the top of my head. And they wanted, I think it was 60 million. It might even have been more like 70. One of them around that ballpark anyway. And I... It feels like a lot of money, and it still feels like a lot of money. But as I alluded to earlier, maybe that's what you've got to pay now. And he's now a senior international regularly, really, for England. So, And he's got more experience under his belt. As I said a moment ago, he's really shiny for Crystal Palace. I think he's a brilliant player. I really do. And if he fits the mould, what Liverpool are looking for, which I still believe we are, which is a left-footed centre-back. And the Jarell Quanta thing is interesting in all of this. Obviously, he's not really a left-footed centre-back, but his emergence and his rise, if you like, to prominence this season has kind of calmed all our worries and concerns about the defensive department because, obviously, there's a time early on this year we were missing Van Dijk through suspension and Canate through injury. And... Quanta stepped up and was absolutely outstanding so he's bridged the gap quite nicely in terms of we can get through until January really but do we still then want to go and sort of double down and say yeah Quanta you're brilliant you're one for the future but we also need the guy who's going to be the left back stroke the left side of centre back because again we're in a world at the moment whereby Robertson's out injured and we are heavily reliant on Costas Timakas, which is okay but it's not a world we want to live in for too long, I wouldn't imagine, because it restricts what Trent can do as well. I'm not sure we'll see much of Trent being that inverted fullback whilst Timakas is there, because do you want Timakas sort of joining a back three against tougher opposition? Potentially not. Like we've got Man City after the next international break. The next run of fixtures is actually quite kind for Liverpool. They're quite Costas-Timakas friendly, I'll put it that way. But then you've got 
City, you've got Manchester United, you've got Arsenal, I think, in December as well. That becomes tricky all of a sudden, really, really tricky. Um, Plu comes in with afternoon, beautiful reds. Afternoon, mate, hope you are well. King Mo, likewise, one of our members. Love that name, King Mo. Really enjoyed that. And, of course, it's a two-year anniversary of King Mo doing bits at Old Trafford. 5-0, up the reds who were in Ecru that day. But what a day that was. What a day that was. Um, Mike Andrew, one of our members, also, all I say... All I say, Dan, is he's the best centre back you can buy on Footy Manager. I assume you talk about in our show. Um, and Footy Manager always a good gauge to go off. I will be buying Footy Manager in about two weeks' time when the new one comes out because I think it's the last one, which is a crying shame. Um, unfortunately, life means I'm too busy these days to actually spend as much time as I'd like to on it. But I wild away numerous dozens, if not hundreds, of uh, college days playing footy manager. Far too much footy manager when I should have probably been doing something a little bit more productive. But it's led me to where I am now. Like all those days playing footy manager and basically reciting every single football stadium there is in this country means I'm now sitting here talking to you about Liverpool, I guess. So it's worked out all right, I think. Um, anyway, super chat which I will bring up in a second, just a minute I can. It's from Veronica. Is there nothing there? Is it just a £2 super chat? Thank you. Yeah, it's just a super... Thank you. Um, I can't comment on it because it doesn't say anything, but cheers. Um, nice to appreciate you getting involved, I guess. Uh, Justin Freeman, however, comes with a chat, which is all in capitals. Are you shouting at me? Hope you're not. Uh, Liverpool should have paid the £30, £35 million pound for Inacio, but now he's worth £60 million. Not worth it. You would prefer Hincapier. Yet yeah, another name, actually. I mentioned Colwell. I mentioned Gahey. Uh, Hincapier was another name heavily linked with Liverpool during the summer. I actually spoke to a few German journalists on the, I think it was deadline day eve, because... On deadline day, obviously me and Chris did that marathon stint for anyone who was here um, watching, tuning in. Thank you so much for doing so. But yeah, I obviously I spoke to a few people to see if that Incapia deal was even possible. And they also said he'd be around 60, 70 million. They also said by Leverkusen weren't willing to sell. And when you look at what Leverkusen are doing in the Bundesliga, top of the Bundesliga right now, under Xavi Alonso and his brilliant management, it appears, um, it'd be a difficult deal to do. But I think Encapier is also brilliant. I'm actually quite. I'll come on to the midfield in a second because I'm. I was saying to Joe, fully enough, before we went live, I'm all in on Andre in the midfield, and I'll tell you why in a few minutes. But when it comes to the defender and the left-sided centre back, which I definitely want, by the way, I think we we really need one. I'm quite easy with who it is. So we've got Encapier. I won't even mention Colwell because whatever. Encapier, Gehi, Inasho, they feel like the three possibilities at the moment. I know Pear Shears has been linked as well previously, but he's just done his ACL, so he's out for the rest of the season. Probably stay clear of that. Uh, Mickey van der Ven went to Tottenham, of course, and Colwell signed his new Chelsea deal. So I'm quite easy with whichever one of them it is. I'm not, I don't have a preference, I don't think. I think if you had to really push me on it, my preference might be Hincapié, but I'd take any of them and be quite happy. I think it's more a case of, they've got to be of a level, they've got to be a certain quality, of course they have. There was a lad from Hull, was it Jacob Greaves we were linked with as well? And he looks fine, but... I'm not sure he's the one personally, albeit we signed Andy Robertson from Hull. I'm well aware of that. But um, yeah, I'm not overly fussed is what I'm trying to say on which one it is. I'm not totally committed to whichever guy. I just want us to sign the right player for that position because I think it would would help us a lot, basically. Um, Malik says, I remember wanting to sign him but ignored him when we missed out. Yeah, I, I, I agree. We might... Um, I think we might go back for one, basically, in January. If not January, definitely the summer, I think, is a, one of the next things on the list, as well as what King Mo brings up here, the new DM play, obviously, 101. And I will come on to that in just a second, just to make sure I've not missed any comments on in our show. Um, Regan, with a super chat, says, Would you let Thiago go if we get Andre? Yeah, and also, thank you very much, mate, as well, for the 199 super chat there. Also, me and Joe were speaking about Thiago, and... We both, I love him. I think he's brilliant, Thiago, I really do. It's such a shame that we've not seen the best of him on a consistent enough basis since we signed because injuries basically have curtailed any Thiago brilliance that Liverpool have been able to extract. And right now, it feels like you could easily forget he played for us. 
you could be forgiven for thinking we sold him in the summer because we just haven't seen him. We haven't heard of him. The other day, Klopp was asked in his press conference, is he any closer? There was no real update. It was the same old situation. I know he suffered a setback. So it's a shame. It's a crying shame that we've not been able to get the best of him because he's a world-class footballer who is just a joy to watch on his day. But I actually think, and I was watching compilations of Andre in the gym yesterday, I know, I actually think Andre is quite like him, but he's a bit tougher, a bit more robust, he's definitely more durable, and he's defensively better as well. So he'd play the six, he's got loads of quality on the ball, and he can run games essentially from that position, whilst also being that tackler, that aggressor, that aggressor rather. Um, so yeah, I'm fully committed to Andre. Anyone who's even remotely like Thiago, um, give me give me right now. And I think Andre might be a little bit. He's only 22. Brazilian. Oh, yeah. Where do I sign? Um, but on the point, yes. Yes, I would. I would sell Thiago in January if it meant we got Andre. And the Andre deal wouldn't even cost us that much. Like, again, forgive me for being slightly off with figures, but I think I'm right in saying it'd be around a 20 million mark and you could probably still get 10 for Thiago. Let's say Thiago plays a handful of games in December for us and can stay fit for them. Not necessarily 90 minutes, but can just be a footballer for us for a little bit. That's great because it gets us through a really tricky spell. And also, it puts him back in the shop window if Thiago needs to be in a shop window for whoever comes and gets him. Turkish club, Saudi Arabian club. They're the areas I'm looking at. Barcelona could come and get him again. I know there's reports on that over the summer. If we could get 10, 15 million for Thiago, maybe a little bit less. That might be a bit stretch, to be honest. Um, and put that towards the Andre deal and pay an extra 10, 15 million for Andre. Poof. Wow. Um... Joe says we need two DMs if Endo isn't up to scratch. And the Endo stuff's interesting. It dawned on me the other night, funny enough, because I haven't really spoke about him and that situation for a couple of weeks. I was sat watching some footy on Sunday night and I thought another game's gone by now where we Andre hasn't had a look him. No, yeah, Andre. Endo hasn't had a look him. Um, and it is a bit weird. And you do start to wonder... And it's too early for this, and I don't think he'll be this. I think he'll play more footy, and I think he'll be better than this. But your mind does wander to such deals as Ben Davis, Ozan Kabak a little bit, and you do, and Arta, less so Arta, because obviously injuries are the main problem for him. But you do wonder whether we might have panicked a little bit, possibly, for Endo. I hope not, and I still believe not. I'm not going to categorically say that's the case yet, but you do... Within just like the games are coming and going now and he's not playing footy. Obviously, it's Toulouse on Thursday night, Europa League and Bournemouth in the Carabao Cup a week later. So there's two opportunities there for him to play, of course, there are. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, Mike Andrew, you're having a conversation with somebody else, of course, but I will bring up the last bit of that. Inasho is going to be world-class if he isn't already. Uh, Craig Flynn asks, how much is Incapier worth? Again, that might be sort of subject to change, but I was told he'd also be in that 60 to 70 million ballpark. So him, Geiki, and Inasho are roughly the same price, give or take a few million, which sounds like a ludicrous thing to say out loud. But um, yeah, I don't think there's much difference really in terms of price so it might just be a case of quality a little bit who do Liverpool prefer a little bit which one's the most attainable as well and like I say if it's January in our show feels doable in January likewise Mark Gahey in Capi it could be the most difficult because Bayer Leverkusen could be in a Bundesliga title race potentially I hope so um Dan 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 that's the sort of name I like to see. Um, how about Andre? We still need defensive six. I will come on to the Andre stuff in a second, I promise you. Uh, I've said it about 10 times already. Um, Panov South says, you can see us getting Andre, but I think we really wanted in Asher. We would have got him in the summer. Yeah, I agree. I get that. I really do. But again, I mentioned the sort of the amount of football Liverpool like their lads to have played before they make a judgment call on him. And maybe we just need to see a little bit more of him. I don't agree with that. If that was the case, I think you kind of go and get it done regardless. But yeah, that might have been why it took a little bit longer than we would have hoped. King Mo values and cap eight around 50 plus. Yeah, if they, if he's won a um, a Bundesliga title by the time we go and get for him, you might be the top end of that valuation, to be honest. Uh, Justin Freeman says, in cap eight and Andre are my two options for us to sign. You must be loving this new show then. Absolutely loving it. Um, Patrick Coakley, I... Don't know what that means. Um, 
basically what we do here is is we find the news that's been going on that day and I come and chat about it. Uh, feel free to watch it, comment on it or not, basically. Uh, I'm not here for views necessarily. I'm just here for a chat about Liverpool and who I think we should sign and likewise who you think we should sign. Um, yeah, RSC says, why are we interested in Inacio right now after he signed a new contract with Sporting until 2027? Yeah, I, I take the point. I'm not sure... The new contract thing means we won't get him necessarily. More importantly, probably from a sporting point of view, sporting Lisbon point of view, that is, um, is that they've doubled his release clause because that release clause around the 35 million mark in the summer must have been scaring the life out of Lisbon, basically. They would have been terrified of somebody actually triggering that because they know how much of a top talent they've got on their hands and the prospect of losing him for that figure they wouldn't have enjoyed. So getting that new deal is less about them saying, no, he's ours now until 2027. It was more about when they do end up selling him, they get what they believe he's worth. Um, so yeah, Mike Andrews, Mike Andrew rather says, Inacio would come straight in. The other alternative would need six months to get used to how we play for him. Andre and Inacio then focus on the Mo replacement if the worst is to happen. Yeah, hopefully the Mo replacement conversation can be left until next summer. Uh, how about Owen Beck should be his chance with Robertson out? I think Luke Chambers is more likely. Is Owen Beck not out on loan somewhere? Um, I'm sure he is. But uh, yeah, I think Luke Chambers is more likely to get an opportunity as left back. I, also, I watched the academy. I went to the academy on Sunday to watch the under-21s play Benfica B. Luke Chambers was really impressive. Javel Quanza played as well. He was outstanding for the 45 minutes he played. And Callum Scanlon came off the bench for Luke Chambers and was also really good at left back. So yeah, I'm not sure Owen Beck is necessarily in that higher ends of the pecking order right now but listen I could be wrong of course I could uh, last couple of comments on in Asher then I will it's out yeah I think it's out already in terms of like the pre out I don't think it's out out to use a Mickey Flanagan joke I don't think it's out out but it could be uh, I am waiting till next month to buy it though to start of next month um, yeah, Endo is getting the Arsene Mello treatment as I said it's quite different it's a little bit different because um, Artem Mello uh, was injured all the time. Uh, Patrick Coakley says, who did you speak to in Germany? Tell us. Now, I I'm not scared of telling you, um, because I literally wrote it in an article before deadline day, so it's common knowledge. But it does mean I have to scroll through WhatsApp, which I don't really want to do while I'm live on air. Um, I will kind of do it whilst also talking to you at the same time. Uh, yeah. M asks thoughts on Scalvini, or is it what's his what's his first name? Scalvini is the guy at Atalanta. Is it Mil? It can't be Milan. Thought he plays for Milan. What's his first name? I'm gonna have to Google that. Um, he got sent off the other day for racing Milan, didn't he? I think. I'm sure, I seen that. But yeah, both of them. Scalvini's really young. Malik wasn't Milan for you. Uh, Malik for you. Um, Scalvini's really really young. If I'm, I'm he's 18 now, potentially. Giorgio Scalvini. Here we go. Let's have a look. Uh, born in 2003, 19 years now. Okay, yeah, both of them. I know Scalvini's very highly rated. Uh, Tio was sent off the other day as a thought. Um, yeah, possibly. Uh, I'm not, I like the options that I've already mentioned, to be fair. I really like Levi Colwell. Um, more importantly, I thought he was an absolute no brainer when that was even a possibility, but unfortunately, committed his future very much to Chelsea. So that wrote that one off entirely. Um, Oh, yeah, for now, I've seen these links uh, yesterday as well. Possibly a good fit, but again, I'm kind of... Oh, well, I'm all in an Andre, to be honest. So, oh, that's nice. You Manchester United fan in the chat. Everyone say hello. Everyone be kind. Yeah, I don't know if you were here earlier when I mentioned it's the two-year anniversary of Liverpool 5, Manchester United nil, Old Trafford. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not into the whole banter club sort of thing anyway. I feel it's pretty childish, but you be you, I guess. Um, but, yeah, 5 nil. that was good, wasn't it? That was really good. Good times. Uh, I am still trying to find um, that person I spoke to for my friend earlier, but I, I can't right now. Uh, the Cop TV. Hi, mate. Hope you are well. Uh, nice one for getting involved. Um, AMB Gaming says, if we get an Asho and Andre, we'll win the league 100%. Yeah, well, I'd like to think you were right. Um, but is Andre coming in January? That's not a given, just internet rumors. Yeah, nothing's a given in the world of transfers. You should know that. But I think there's a good chance we get Andre in January. A hell of a good chance, to be honest. There, a couple of bits of final against Boca Juniors. Funnily enough, somebody mentioned Boca Juniors a moment ago. Is on November the 4th. If they win that, 
even if they don't win that, I think he'll leave. I spoke to a Fluminense fan last week, actually, and that is on YouTube. That is available now on Redmen TV too. Um, and he said, regardless of that result, he is on the move after it. So, yeah, I can very much see a world whereby we sign Andre in January. Anyway, on that note, I will actually tell you the news about Andre now. I've been promising it for the last 20 minutes and keep getting sidetracked, but I'll do it. Um, Football Insider gave us an update on Andre today. There was one yesterday in Transfers.com as well that I've seen. So his name is very much in the news cycle at the moment. But Football Insider said, the Reds still believe they are in the driving seat to sign Fluminense midfielder Andre, despite new interest from Arsenal. Liverpool were the front runners for the Brazil international during the summer and saw a number of bids rejected for his services. So the Arsenal entered the race, but their interest is likely to hinge on potential departures for, G- for Jorginho and Thomas Partey in January and that bids from Liverpool in the summer thing is interesting because I've seen Tim Vickery who absolutely knows everything there is to know about Brazilian football he also mentioned the bid from Liverpool in the summer and I think the the director or the chief executive of Fluminense spoke recently and mentioned contact from Liverpool so for anyone who doesn't believe the Andre links I think they're very much mistaken to be honest, uh, Craig Flynn is very much keen on the Andre stuff as well. I'm just going to scroll up one second. Um, oh, I see. Was I not clear? Yeah, I was in the gym watching compilations of Andre. Um, that's a thing that happened, would you believe? An actual thing that happened. Um, yeah, last couple of comments now before I begin to wrap up. I did want to tell you about Andre's stats actually as well. And I was looking at his stats similar to did with Inacio. And this season, the Brazilian season runs a little bit mad compared to our season. I'm aware of that. Um, like they're almost at the end of their season now. I mentioned the couple of Brazilian finals like a week or so away. Um, but he's played 50 games this season. He only scored once, but whatever. He's been booked 14 times as well, just for passing comments sake. But the fact that he's played 50 games is boss. If Liverpool do sign him, of course. Because we always sort of, Wax Liverpool about Gini Wijnaldum's best ability being his availability. If he's played 50 times in a single campaign, it looks like he's pretty available a lot as well. So, again, I mentioned it earlier. I love the way he plays the game. I really do. I think he's got, I think he's got everything. I think he's got loads of class. He's a little bit flamboyant for a DM as well, but he's also got that tough tackling, that gnarly side to him. We've all seen the video of him laughing at a referee, so he's a little bit of a shit house as well. So, yeah, I'm all in. Um, I did do a little bit of research into his stats as well. And when I say research, I just typed his name into Sofa Score. And in the Serie A, as it is in Brazil, um, I'm not sure how many appearances this is across, but it's like I say, it's been a lot of the season. Let me check. Sorry, one sec. 22 Serie A appearances. He averages 7.12 so far this season. Season. We're only a few games ago. He started all 22 games actually as well. Um, and he's played 89 minutes every, on average every game too. So he's a he's a tough old cookie. Let me just check some of his defensive stats. Cause that's what we're all interested in, isn't it? Um, 1.2 interceptions per game, 2.1 tackles per game, and 7.8 ball recoveries per game. Now I'm not the stat guy. That's Josh Williams who will be in later. But off the top of my head, I think that's pretty good. Um, successful dribbles to sort of make the point about him also being quite flamboyant Um, 1.5 per game which is 71% success rate and he's also won 5.7 duels per game at 61% so yeah he's got a lot going on a hell of a lot going on and I want him I really want him and that's all that matters so go and sign in Liverpool simple as that Um, Michael Edwards says while you're moaning we're winning games I don't know what that means has anybody moaned like, I'm made up, we're boss at footy again. Made up. But could we be better? Yeah. Could we add to the squad? Yeah. Will we add to the squad? I really hope so. Um, because why not? Like, we're boss and we're playing really well. But does anybody think we're perfect, really? I'm not sure. Uh, and if you do, sound happy days. Uh, Derek Main says Quanta should be given a chance before we look for other centre-backs. Yeah, possibly. I actually wonder with Quanta and this dawned on me on Sunday at the Academy when I was watching him for the 21s I think he's a massive replacement now I don't think he's like a Virgil van Dijk type the side he plays on because he played right side of the fence actually I'm not sure he is the left side of one we need and want I still think we need to go into the market for that Um, I think Quanta might replace Matip and Matip might deserve a new contract by the way as well that's a totally different conversation. But um, I think Quanta might be the next guy in line 
to be Joel Matip. Um, but yeah, that's just my opinion. Uh, last couple of questions now. Questions, comments now before I do wrap up. Thank you everybody so much for getting involved before I do so, of course. Let me just check this too before I do. Viewer activity. It's just gone really dark in here. I quite like the mood and the lighting. It's, it's a little bit Amsterdam-y. A little bit seedy, I want to say. Yeah, oh yeah, it's dark in here, mate, yeah. It's just toffee. Don't panic. Everything's going to be fine. I don't think there's any sort of emergency. Um, but it is darker. I'm guessing we paid the lecky bill. Um, if we're saving up to put towards Liverpool's transfer kitty, then sound. I'm here for it. I'll sit in the dark all day long um, for that. Um, loads of people just ripping the United guy now for getting involved, saying happy anniversary, which is good. Uh, Virgil underscore 87 says you guys think Endo hasn't gotten used to the system yeah possibly that and maybe there we go we have light um, might be the system thing <sighs> but the problem is if that is the case and everyone's always sort of referred back to Fabinho and how long it took him to settle down and sort of get used to what Liverpool wanted to do and what Jürgen Klopp's demands were etc is Endo doesn't necessarily have time on his side for that we needed Endo to come in and be plug and play be a stopgap for Liverpool. Have we got a season to wait for Endo to get used to everything? I don't know. Can we afford to say, oh, you get it now. Now you understand. There you go. You're now 31, nearly 32 or whatever you'll be. Go and be it now for five years. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like we signed someone before that happens. And I, I, I hope and believe that Endo will have good games for Liverpool in the coming weeks between now and sort of Christmas time. But... I would like to see us sign Andre in January. Um, if possible, please, Liverpool. Um, last couple of comments now, and I really will wrap up. The darkness has give you another minute um, of me. Um, and I also noticed I went black as well for a moment, true. Yeah, I did notice that. Um, there's a weird few minutes there, but we, we battled through. Um, I'm sure you didn't mind not seeing my face just for a couple of minutes. I'm sure you could cope with that. Um, could you still hear me, Alejandro? I'm sure you could still hear me but just couldn't see me for a minute. Um, you also mentioned that. Yeah, I'm, again, I'm sure you weren't that bothered. Um, I just want to scroll up one second. There we go. That's nice. Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I, I, is that about me? Is that about me? Feels harsh. Never have said anything that bad, have I? Um, yeah, that feels harsh. Um I always bring up the positive ones, so I guess it was about time I brought up something what could be negative. Um, and I apologise, Mr. Reliable, um, for not adhering to your needs. Um, but yeah, anyway. Um, Red Light District TV, yeah, it did feel a little bit of that. And I don't know if you've heard or seen that tweet doing the rounds of that voice chat, but that was pretty much the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, I'm not going to go into any more details than that. You can find it for yourselves. Um, Dom Lair, come on Copenhagen, you never walk alone. Yeah, there's loads of United abuse in the chat now, which is very, very good. Um yeah, anyway, I'll just kind of scroll down and see if Mr. Reliable's come back to me, whether he was calling me a Muppet or not, because if he was, that's obviously the rest of my day absolutely ruined. Um, now, everyone's just having to go to the Man United fan, which is fine. I'm also here for that. Oh, he might have been referring to the United guy. Yeah, I hope so. Um, but I don't. I'm, I'm easy. Um, he's come back, though, and he hasn't confirmed either way. So I'm still concerned. I'm still concerned. Anyway, thank you so much for watching uh, and indeed listening or just getting involved or whatever you've done over the past 20 odd minutes or so. Yeah, I'll just quickly recap. Liverpool scouting Gonzalo Inacio. I would be made up if that happened um, because I want a left-sided centre-back to come in and make our squad even better. Liverpool also remain the front runners to sign Andre from Fluminense. Likewise, I would be made up if that happened. Thank you again for watching. It really does mean a lot. Thank you for sticking with me when the screen went off and indeed when it went all dark and seedy in here. Doesn't always happen. We can promise it won't happen again, I think. Until next time, take it easy. Thank you so very, very much for checking out the video. If you enjoyed it, drop a like. Uh, the season is now well underway. If you need extra Red Men content, be it podcasts, videos, documentaries, interviews, and general shows, fill your boots on redmenplus.com today.